Joe Biden says, let's deal with it. Deal with the history that has resulted in stark disparities based on race. For 47 years, sleepy Joe Biden viciously and repeatedly attacked black Americans. We're going to address systemic racism and build real economic opportunity of equality. To every black American, I'm asking you to go out and vote. President Trump calling out Joe Biden for his political history with black Americans, while the former VP and Kamala Harris made their own pitch for the black vote. So where does the enthusiasm lie? Former NFL player and CEO of the Brewer Group, Jack Brewer, joins us now. Jack, it's good to see you this morning. Thanks for being here. Great to be back. Of course. Let's take a look at some of these polls here and get your opinion on this. So the question is, if the election for president was today, would you vote for? And as you can see, in Georgia, 90% overwhelming majority of black and African-American voters say they would vote for Joe Biden. That's opposed to the 7% for President Trump. And then the same poll here in Pennsylvania. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. As you can see, 71% say they would vote for Joe Biden with 19% for President Trump. What do you make of those numbers? Well, you know, I think those numbers are a little bit off, uh, particularly the Georgia numbers. I think President Trump actually, uh, with male voters, black male voters, uh, will be uh, near 15 to, to 20 percent of the vote. Uh, in Pennsylvania, I'm expecting up, up to 25 percent of African Americans uh, to come out for President Trump. I mean, we have to remember what we're facing right now. African Americans are tired. They're sick and tired of politicians like Joe Biden talking about ending uh, the racial disparities when he's the actual one uh, who has has pushed so many racially um, profiling uh, and, and just, you know, vicious policies like mass incarceration. Uh, this man is the same man who uh, were, were buddies with segregationists, pushing segregationist policies uh, on our kids throughout the 70s and 80s. Uh, it's absolutely ridiculous for him to try to be the voice uh, of racial unity. Uh, it, it really is. And black people uh, are aware of that, uh, and they're sick and tired of having these politicians who have mass incarceration incarcerated and broke our families mm -hmm. apart uh, to be the ones out here talking about unity. And Jack, with that in mind, you believe black Americans will turn out for President Trump like no Republican before him. I want to take a look at some numbers quickly. They show the president with 14 percent support among black and African-American voters. Obviously, that is a wide gap between Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Why do you believe at the end of the day that number is going to be higher than 14%? I, t I tell you what, if it's 14 percent, we win this election. Uh, there hasn't been a, pr a Republican president in our generation uh, to pull out 14 percent of the African-American vote. That poll is showing you uh, that people are waking up. That poll is also not showing you uh, that we have a silent majority in the black community. You are shamed and ridiculed um, in, in America if you're an African-American supporting this president. So, of course, the, the polls are going to be suppressed. But people understand policy. People understand school choice. African-American mothers who are single mothers putting their kids in these public schools that are broken, they want their kids to have school choice, too. They, 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 they feel that. African-American Christians are tired of watching 20 million babies be aborted in America. People are sick and tired of this stuff that's going on. We understand that we need God back in this country. We understand that this president is standing up for the principles that African-Americans feel are important, the principles of family, the principles of family. Uh, and we are going to come out in droves to vote for this president. I cannot wait until tomorrow night. Jack, I hear, um, correct me if I'm wrong, I hear passion and frustration in your voice. And I'm curious where that comes from. It comes from, it's just, it's been too long, you know. Uh, I work in the inner cities, and I, I go into my schools where uh, I mentor, and I see these kids that are reading and writing uh, at, at levels uh, that are embarrassing, third, like third world countries. We have kids that are zero proficient in reading, zero proficient in math. I go into the prisons, and I look at all these black men that have been mass incarcerated, giving life sentences for drug offenses. I mean, this, this, these things have to come to an end. You know, the Bible 
Bible teaches us to go out and serve the most underserved. And that is exactly what the President Trump policies have done. We've had politicians like Barack Obama in office, and you go to his neighborhoods, you go to his city in Chicago, and there's war zones in the streets. There are more people dying in Chicago than in Afghanistan and Iraq. Uh, and so, and, and we vote these folks in thinking they have our best interests. But in all actuality, they get into office and they leave filthy rich. Uh, and it has to come to an end. Uh, America will stand up. We are America that, that appreciates our flag. We appreciate right. our country. Uh, but more importantly, we appreciate our Constitution and the ability that it gives all of us to go out and fight uh, for freedom and liberty. Uh, and that's what this election means. All right. Jack Brewer, live for us on Election Day Eve. Jack, we appreciate your insight, as always. Important words. Thanks, Thank you, sir.